Hello and thank you for joining. Today we're going to take a look at a dynamic schedule. In this case, we're actually going to be doing this the advanced way. You'll probably remember in our previous tutorial for the basic dynamic schedule where we were sending a static report to a fluctuating list of recipients. Well in this case, we're actually going to deliver a dynamic report to a dynamic group of recipients as well. So let me explain. Using kind of a similar example that we used in the previous tutorial, Chris is a grocery dealer that has to deliver over 200 reports to each and every single one of his stores. Each store is supposed to receive a vendor report or an order report unique specifically to them. Moreover, what happens is some units go offline, stores close down, and also new stores open regularly. So the list changes, and so do the recipients. So what Chris needs is a special system that's going to reel through his database, populate the key parameters for each of the stores that are present and are located and are active, and then deliver that report to the corresponding email addresses as well. Alright, let's get started. So first, we go to Dynamic Schedule. And it'll bring up the wizard. We'll select our report. We'll use the same report we used in the last one. And then we'll give the schedule a name. Add a description. And then add keywords. Once all is set, click Next. Now we have to determine where it's going to go to. We can use disk and send it to a disk. We can use email and email it to them. Fax the reports, FTP them, print them, use SharePoint, or send a text message. What's great about a dynamic schedule is that we can dynamically populate the destination information for all of these. Let's pick email again. Let's have this schedule run twice a week. Or actually, let's have this run every month. All right. In the basic tutorial, we were only populating a static parameter for the report. In this case, we want a dynamic parameter, or in other words, we want to populate the key parameter with data from a database. So first we'll select the key parameter that's going to be used. And then what we want to do, rather than selecting a static parameter value, we're going to actually choose populate key parameter with data from a database. It'll bring up our simple querying tool where either where you can actually build the query that you need to make things happen. We'll select the DSN that we're going to be running this report against and connect to it. We'll select the table that holds the records or the values that we want the report to run for. Also, you can parse out anything you don't want in the table. So say, for example, Chris only wants to run it for where the area or the region is equal to Great Britain. So that way you can only run it for records and break it down by region. If you click parse, it'll show you all the records that are available for Great Britain, which is only one, White Clover Markets. If you wanted to run for all of the records in that table, don't do anything at all. And click parse and it'll display all of the records available that match your search criteria. So as you see, there are going to be seven records here that will be delivered that are going to be getting a report. 
You probably noticed earlier that my crystal report actually had dozens of parameter values. What's great about the dynamic schedule is, is that it's going to only run for these seven. So, if these are the stores that are currently active that are supposed to be getting reports. And any, even if they're in your report, if they don't show up in this list, they're not going to get it. And as new records are added to the database, then it'll automatically detect those records and run for the new stores as well. And as likewise, if these are removed, then also they will no longer, the report will no longer run for them as well. So once we're happy with our selection query, click OK, and we're all set here. Now we have another choice. We can use a static destination. In other words, we're going to populate multiple those seven reports for each store, but we're just going to send it to one email address, one disk drive, or one place. There's no dynamic destination there. What we really want to do we want to dynamically populate the destination too. So similar to the basic tutorial, we're going to select the database that holds the email addresses. What's great also about the dynamic schedule is if say the key parameters and the records that you actually want the report to run for is located in one database, However, the email addresses and contact information of your recipients and is a completely different database, you can use the dynamic schedule to link the two. So we'll pick my completely different database, my CRD samples, and we'll connect to it. We'll select the table and the column that holds my key parameter. Notice that even though it's in a separate table, and even though that the tables are named something different and the columns are named something different, it doesn't matter. What we care about is that the values between the other database and the values in this database match. That way we'll know what to compare it to. And then simply select the field that holds the corresponding email addresses for each of my stores. All you have to do is test it out and just type in a value. Then you'll notice that there's definitely an email address for the cracker box and it definitely is there. So now we know that record is there and it's actually going to run for that and we know we set up our linking correctly. Once you're happy with your linking, click next. Okay, here's where the fun begins. Similar to the basic way, you notice there's no to field here. We've already established who the report is going to be going to earlier on when we set up our database linking and picked out the email addresses. So now, if you want, you can simply add a CC and a BCC field for any additional recipients. You can also add a subject to the email, just like you're typing in Outlook email. And now we can use dynamic inserts to customize the email. So say I want to customize the subject of the email, I just simply type in, I can simply go over here to my dynamic schedule table fields and pluck out the values I want to stick there. So monthly report for, let's insert the company name. Drag it and drop it and there it is. Moreover, I can fully customize the email as well. Perfect. So now that we've actually adapted our email and customized it for each of our customers, it adds a very nice touch to the way how things look. I select my format for the report. And finally, I can actually customize the name of the output file. So say I want each, instead of it being named, my report that it comes out, being named orders by month, I actually want it to be named for each of the company names that it's generating for. Simply click Customize Output Name and then Insert Key Parameter. Perfect. So once our email is set up, we just click OK. 
and then click Next. All right. For as usual, you can go through your database logins. And then you can even use Resume with Cache Data. What's great about this, say you were processing well over 200, 300 reports, and there's been an error or failure of some kind. What the dynamic schedule has the ability to do is pick up where it left off. That way, if there's been a problem, it won't have to go back and reprocess all 200, 300 of your schedules. And finally, Snapshots takes a picture of the report as it's produced. You can do the usual error handling. So if there's been an error, retry for a certain number of times. And you can even check to see if the report is blank. If it's blank, you can ignore the report altogether. Or you can run any number of tasks against it. And finally, custom tasks are tasks that you can run off the back of your dynamic schedule. Say, these, all, or these are all reports going to individual SharePoint drives. Well, hey, why not send an email notification notifying the staff that that report is there? Once you're happy with your schedule overall, click Finish. Excellent. Now that our schedule is finished, you'll see it listed here. If I right click on it, I can access the properties to make changes if necessary. I can disable it so it'll no longer run. And I can even execute it on demand. And off it goes. Perfect. Well, what we've accomplished is a dynamically generated report that's going to reel through a database, format a report for each specific user, and then deliver that unique report to that recipient. Saves a lot of time and energy. Thank you very much for joining.